pray for anything this morning. I'm going to try to sing uh, 318, I Believe in a Hill Called Mount Calvary. attempt to uh, answer a question that some may have and quite honestly a question that maybe some have not really thought about ever before. The question is this, is heaven going to be the same for everyone? Some of us may think of course heaven's going to be the same for everyone, it's heaven, right? And other people may think to themselves, mm, I never really thought about it, is heaven going to be the same for everyone? What we're going to read in the scripture this morning and see exactly what the Bible has to say about it. And let me just go ahead and tell you up front that heaven is not the same for everyone. Heaven is not that socialist place where everybody gets the same thing. Uh, that is not the case. The Bible talks specifically about that and, and about how uh, there's different rewards for different individuals and God has 
that in store for us. And so we're going to read this morning from Scripture and see what the Bible has to say. Is heaven the same for everyone? And the answer to that is no. It is not the same for everyone. Many people have this, uh, this idea, this belief that heaven's going to have this, this, com this commune, this divine commune where everyone has this same type of experience. Uh, but uh, as we discover today, we understand that heaven um, that, we, that we experience in the next life is actually determined how Christians live in this life. Hebrews, the ninth chapter. And I'm going to have a lot of scriptures to support all of this, and it's going to be all up on the screen up here as we go over this. Heaven, not the same for everyone. Now, scripture is very clear on several things. Uh, scripture, scripture is very clear on everyone being judged by God. Both the believer and the non-believer will be judged by God. Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verse 27, uh, says this, And just as it is appointed for people to die once, and after this, judgment. We're going to die once upon this earth, and then uh, judgment. And we're going to break this down in the various types of judgment here in a bit. Uh, but... Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand this, and we've talked about this a couple of weeks back actually, uh, that the what you do on the earth while you're living now determines where you will spend eternity. Uh, and so that's an, un, an uncertain uh, situation where uh, there's, no, there's, no ex, uh, there's, no, there's nothing there that's going to, to say one way or the other uh, after you die, like there's not an up or down or somebody can't pray you in or out or give enough money or this, that, and the other. We, we talked about that a couple of weeks back. Uh, you are going to die once and after that be judged. Everybody is, both the believer and the non-believer. 2 Timothy talks about this in 2 Timothy the 4th chapter, verse 1. Uh, I solemnly charge you before God and Christ, who is going to judge the living and the dead uh, because of his appearing in the kingdom, uh, so we are all going to be judged by God. And we're judged by God based upon what we're doing on the earth now. Uh, all of our actions, all of our deeds, what we do will be judged by God. Uh, both the, the, the saved and the unsaved, both the Christians and the non-Christians, will be judged when we die. But will we all be judged in the same manner? Let's see what scripture says about this. Ladies and gentlemen, scripture talks about how there's two different types of judgment. Two different types of judgment. And sometimes right now you may be scratching your head like, what are you talking about? Well, I'm glad you're scratching your head because that's how we learn uh, is by getting in the word of God. There's two different types of judgment. The type of judgment is this. One is for Christians and the other type of judgment is for non-Christians. First point I want to make this morning, ladies and gentlemen, is this, the judgment of all Christians. Christians, every single one of us, will stand before and be judged by God. It says here in Scripture, Paul speaks about this in 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, verse 10. Paul says here in 2 Corinthians, 5th chapter, verse 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due to us, for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. You see, the difference between the Christian's judgment and the non-Christmas judge, Christian judgment is uh, the judgment seat of Christ here, the, the bima, if you, those of you guys are like the old Greek uh, uh, words, uh, bima, or the judgment seat of Christ, the result of the judgment seat of Christ is going to be for eternal rewards. There is something else called the great white throne of judgment, and that is going to be for eternal punishment. They are not the same. That's right. They are not the same. The, the, the bima, the judgment seat of Christ, is like this. Um, as a matter of fact, in, uh, in, in Acts um, 12th chapter or so, 
uh, in Acts the 12th chapter where the, Paul gets taken before the, the, the ruler there. And the, the ruler, is on the, it says that he's on the, the bima, the, the judgment seat there. Um, and the, the judgment seat is where the judge pronounces a judgment of one way or the other. But understand this, ladies and gentlemen, the judgment seat of Christ that we're talking about here in Scripture is not whether a person goes to heaven or hell. You've already determined that here. You don't stand before God after you die. Uh, that's not what this is talking about. What it's talking about is the rewards that you get. So that brings in this big picture here. So does living my life on this earth, does it really matter? Absolutely it really matters. You know, that uh, absolutely really matters. So we're going to get into that as we get further into to, to Scripture here. But ladies and gentlemen, Christians will be judged. We're going to be appearing before the judgment seat of Christ. And each one is going to receive the due, the, the, what we're seeing, what is due to us while we received what we got in this body, whether good or bad. Now, check this out. What if, what if you got to heaven? And as soon as you got to heaven, he said, oh, well, welcome. Welcome, Frank. Welcome, Frank. Um, glad, glad you're here. Uh, you, you accepted Christ. Glad you're here. Uh, what you need to do is uh, get really ex excited because tonight we're going to go over here to this huge movie theater and it's a sold out crowd and everybody's going to review your life. And uh, it's a sold out feature about your life from the time you were born to the time you died. And we're going to review that in front of everybody. And old Frank would go, Really? <laughs> Don't really want that. Nobody would. And that's not going to happen. But what is going to happen is there's going to be an audience of one there. God. God has sees, has seen, will see everything that you've done, both good and bad. God is going to talk to you about that. Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, this is not about salvation. You already saved, or you wouldn't be in heaven in the first place. Amen. All right? You're not, it's not like you're sitting before God in heaven, and he's going, well, you know, let's review your life, and uh, you didn't do enough good, so we're bouncing you out of here. See you later. That's not what this is about. Some religions teach that. I don't believe you find that in Scripture. But what you do find in Scripture is God... Take it, teaching us, talking us, judging us based upon our lives. So our lives should definitely mean something we're upon, the, on, upon this earth. It's extremely important for you and I to live our lives like we are Christians upon this earth because God is looking. Now check this out. You know, you think about it all the time about how about how you know Big Brother's watching this and Big Brother's watching that and so on and so forth. And that's a, that, that's the, that's something that we always say. But but imagine if you're you know whenever uh, whenever your folks, whenever you're a little kid and your folks were there, and your folks were watching you, and you always make sure you watch your P's and Q's and that kind of stuff. And there was it was always a time in which you thought that mom and dad weren't watching, and you got away from that. You know what I'm talking about. I, I, I remember several different times, and I don't want to tell upon myself because I don't want my dad's over here. Uh, they can tell you many times, but there's times where you like uh, you didn't think mom and dad was watching. You're like, ah, they're not paying attention. I remember one time, just I remember one time in the in, we were in the store, and my sister, I love her to death, but my sister always wanted to, every time we went to the store, she always thought she had to get something. And I was one of those conservative guys. No, we don't need it. We don't need it. We don't need it. And so I remember being at B&J Drug in, in Lovington, New Mexico. And my sister went and got a piece of candy. And I kept telling her to put it back. And she was little. And she said, no. And I reached my foot out and tripped her. <laughs> and she fell with her knee on that concrete. Bam. She screamed. Here comes my mama running. Picked her up. What happened to me, Charles? I don't know, mama. She <laughs> fell. <laughs> Don't act like you didn't do the same kind of things. Now, my mom, having that mother's intuition, she knew that she didn't fall. She knew that there was something more sinister than that. And I was held accountable for that. 
when I got home, you know, with a belt, right? Mm -hmm. So, when we may think that God doesn't care about what we do upon this earth, well, as long as we're saved and we get into heaven, God doesn't care. That is incorrect. God does care. God does care. God wants his children to perform, to be active, to be out there, to, 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 to rise to the occasion, to, to meet the bar that he has set for all of us. And every single one of us have different bars that he set. Because every single one of us, he's given gifted different gifts and talents and, and different things and different, uh, uh, different fruits of the spirit, if you will. But he's given every single one of us different things. And it's up to us to, to use that to the best of our ability, all for the glory of God. The judgment seat of Christ, ladies and gentlemen, is for condemnation. Excuse me. The judgment seat of Christ is not for commendation. It's for a commendation of believers. While the great white throne uh, of judgment is for condemnation of unbelievers. Again, judgment seat of Christ is for eternal rewards. Great white throne of judgment is for eternal punishment. They are as different as, as night and day. The judgment seat of Christ is only for Christians who've made a profession of faith on this earth. It's not going to determine heaven or hell. Uh, that's already been determined by you on this earth. Now let's talk about the judgment seat, the judgment rather of non-Christians. The judgment of non-Christians. The great white throne of judgment here. These are this great white throne of judgment is for those that did not profess that Jesus is Lord of their lives while they're living on this earth. Revelation the twentieth chapter. If you'll flip over with me there, please. Revelation the 20th chapter, verse 11 through 15, speaks about this. John writes about this extensively. Consequently, you realize when you read quotes, quotes from, 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 from in the Bible about God, that God speaks more about hell than he does heaven. He speaks more about, about not wanting to go there and about the dangers of that than he does heaven in scriptures. Revelation the 20th chapter verse 11 through 15 says this this is John speaking about when he got called up into the, the third heaven the heaven we've been talking about the, the whole time there then I saw a great white throne and one seated on it earth and heaven fled from his presence and no place was found for them I also saw the dead and the great and the small standing before the throne and the books were open. Another book was opened, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged according to the works by what was written in the books. Verse 13, then the sea gave up the dead that were in it and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. Each one was judged according to their works. Death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. Verse 15, if anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. This is intense, ladies and gentlemen. Real intense. This, the great white throne of judgment, is not for those that profess Jesus Christ as our Lord. Okay? This is not for believers in Christ. These, these are for those that, that denied Christ, that, that died, that are non-Christians. They died. And now, during this time at the great white throne of judgment, this takes place after the thousand-year millennium uh, in which, uh, um, that we talked about for the last several weeks. This takes place at the very end. Now, this is what's intense here. The, the, those that are, have, were, have, have, were dead, they also will be brought up from the abyss, from Hades, will be brought up to stand before God. Those that are alive during that particular time, that have not professed Jesus Christ the Lord, will also stand before God. And the books were opened, it says in Scripture. And it says there that the eternal punishment, the lake of fire, the eternal punishment is awaiting for those that are non-Christians. That is another judgment that God is going to give. Uh, Christians are judged and receiving, receive rewards or crowns, if you will. But those that are not Christians, they 
are also rewarded by their deeds or their lack of. And uh, not a very popular thing to talk about, not really politically correct, I guess, in this day, in the day and age, but the judgment for non-Christians is just exact, exactly that, the lake of fire. But I have fantastic news for you. That's one of those infomercials. Wait, there's more. Romans, the 8th chapter, and Romans, the 5th chapter, says this, and this is marvelous news, sweet, sweet news. It's a sweet verse. If you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord of, here on your, of your life here on the earth, then uh, and you live like it. Romans 8, 1 here says this, there is therefore no condemnation found in those in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation found in those in Christ Jesus. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, that as believers in Christ, you, you are not condemned. Jesus has already paid the price for you, for me. Romans 5, 1 also goes on and says this, therefore, that's, therefore since we have been declared righteous uh, by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a huge praise for us as we understand that, yes, we're going to be standing before God, but no, we will not be at the great right throne of judgment. No, we are not going to be uh, cast out of heaven. But as Christians, you are going to be there standing before God. And yes, we will be judged, but it's not a salvation judgment at this time. God's justification here exempts us from God's condemnation. But, as I said earlier, it doesn't exempt us from God's evaluation. Going back to what Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 9 and 10, uh, going back and reviewing that again, it says here in Scripture, Therefore, whether we are at home or away, uh, we make it our aim to be pleasing to Him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may be repaid for what is done in the body, whether good or or evil. When does this happen? Does anybody know when this happens? How will anybody know when this happens? This is, a, I guess, the time you can speak out. Does anybody know when this happens? Ladies and gentlemen, Scripture is actually silent on when this happens. We really don't know when this happens. Now, some believe this happens immediately when you die. Uh, there's a good argument for that. And some believe this takes place just uh, uh, at the rapture, uh, at the end of the church age, during the rapture when that happens, uh, due to the, the 24 elders having crowns on their, their, their head. And so some believe it happens then. But Scripture is actually silent on when this, this uh, standing before the judgment seat of Christ is. We don't know when it does happen, but what we do know is we're in heaven with God. Amen. That's a praise. All right. So if you know when that happens, let me know. Um, you may have to, you know, <laughs> it's, not, it's not in the Bible that I've read. Uh, so, so you can maybe, maybe help me out on that. As I've, talked, I've read different theologians on that, and they too have different uh, ideas on when that does happen. Uh, but what this, this makes us understand is, and it brings us here uh, to look at the value, the value of the works that you and I do on earth. Is it valuable to do works upon earth? We all quote the scripture here, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For you're saved by grace through faith, which is not of yourself. It is God's gift, not by works, so that anyone can boast. So we quote this over and over and over. You're not saved by works. And so if you're not saved by works, why do them? That's... Maybe a valid question. If, if you're not saved by works, why in the world do them? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because Scripture is very specific upon this. Ladies and gentlemen, our works, they're worthless in securing us a place in heaven. That's only by faith that we receive a place in heaven. So our works are worthless in securing a place in heaven. However, they are integral in determining our experience in heaven. Well, that's a mouthful. Let me say that again because I don't think that some of us got that here. That our works are worthless in securing a place in heaven. They are integral in determining our experience in heaven. Ephesians 2, 10 goes on and says, For we are his workman, workmanship, created in Christ for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. 
And I absolutely love this. Uh, Ephesians uh, 2.10. God has prepared us works for us to do. Now this goes way back when and continues today and it will continue in the future until God calls you home. But God, Ephesians 2.10 tells us, you know I talk about those divine appointments all the time. I talk about it and talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. I think that Ephesians 2.10 talks about that directly. I think that that's biblical uh, 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 biblical uh, proof that, that, that we have those divine appointments. God has prepared in scripture works. God has prepared jobs. God has prepared things for you and I to do. It's just up to us now to make those jobs. Now, we all live upon this earth, and yes, sometimes we call in sick on different jobs, and you know, sometimes we don't feel like going to work, and so you magically got a doctor's appointment that day, or you know, you know, you got a fever, a, sniffly, a snuffy nose, or you know, your toe hurts, and so you have to call in sick for whatever. Uh, and so all these kind of excuses that we have. But I'm afraid that some of us also have these kind of excuses when it comes to performing God's work. Well, I, I got a, sniffy, a stuffy nose or I stubbed my toe or I don't have time. That's a big, that's the biggest one. I don't have time to do that. Hey, if anybody knows about managing time, this is a way right here. I understand that. But I also understand this, ladies and gentlemen, I do not want to miss out on what God has for me. Plain and simple. I don't want to miss out on what God has prepared for me. When you help somebody, when you, when you speak to somebody, when you go out and you, and you do exactly what Ephesians 2.10 is talking about right there, ladies and gentlemen, not only do they receive the blessing, but you receive the blessing as well. And what we're going to talk about tonight is the blessings you receive are out of this world. Literally out of this world right. you see sometimes we allow our own intuition our own mindset our own lives to get in the way while Christians or all Christians we escape God's condemnation we will not escape God's evaluation in our lives so what did you do with your life imagine standing before God and God asking you that what did you do with your life he knows the answer before he even speak. What did you do with your life? You insert, you insert your name there. Brother Jimmy, what did you do with your life? Well, you may think to yourself, I'm in heaven. Okay, I, I've made it here. Uh, I'm in heaven. Why does it matter? Well, that's a valid question. But ladies and gentlemen, what did you do your with your life? Did you waste your life on th doing things that uh, for you? Why, while neglecting doing things for Him? Our lives should be built around glorifying God. Our day-to-day -day lives are, that we are living are, is built for us to glorify God with our lives. We are to live for Jesus. We're not simply should be satisfied to say, okay, I got my ticket to heaven. Life's good. I don't have to do anything else. But you see that time and time again, that mentality. Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll just tell you, just honest with you, I'm scared that there's many, many, many false converts in this world. There's many people that have this false sense of, I'm saved. Well, what did you do? Well, I, when I was 10 years old, I walked down the aisle and, and I sat in the car and I prayed some prayer that this man just prayed with me and he prayed it and I just I said I agreed with it and then I got dunked and okay what have you how have you been living your life since? Well, I, it doesn't matter. I'm already saved. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm scared by that. I believe that there are millions of false conversions that people have a false sense of being saved. Now we don't know what. We don't know about who's saved and who's not saved. That's, that's true, but we do know what the Bible talks about, how, how certain trees can only produce certain fruits. Uh, uh, an apple tree can only produce apples that don't produce pears. And so when we say that we are one thing, we say that we're Christians, but yet our lives are contrary to that, I scratch, I scratch my head. But more than that, ladies and gentlemen, I, I think that God is saddened. God is saddened, I believe. I think that our lives should be built about around glorifying God. I really do. In our day-to-day -day lives, I think that we are to be living for God instead of living for ourselves. And sometimes we get things out of alignment. 
We live for ourselves versus living for others. But you might think to yourself again, does it really matter? I'm in heaven. Does it really matter? Does it really matter what my rewards are going to be? After all, hey, I'm in heaven. Some of us might think, okay, I, I got in, but by the skin of my teeth, I got in. At least I'm there. Oh yeah, you are there. But is everybody going to be the same there? Is everybody going to have the same life there? One theologian put it this way. He said, and while it's true that everybody's cup is going to be running over in heaven, we're all going to have different sized cups. And so we are going to be in heaven, but yet God is going to judge us according to what we've done upon this life. And, and I pray that you and I really take this message into heart. Because sometimes, let us be honest, sometimes we don't even think about that. Does God really care about what we do upon this earth because we are saved? Is it going to be different in heaven for based upon what we do on this earth? Yes, it is. And yes, God does care. Man, and, I, and I'm afraid that, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we, we think to ourselves, as long as I got that ticket, I'm good. I don't need to worry about it. Life's good. I can just go on. I think there's more to it than that. I think Scripture is very plain on that, and we're going to jump into that heavy tonight. You might think to yourself, Brother Jimmy, this is not fair. Why can't everybody just get a participation ribbon? Why can't everybody just, we're there. Why can't everybody get the same thing? doesn't work that way. I know our world around us works that way, but in heaven, it doesn't work that way. There's eternal consequences to Christ's judgment. The reality is, ladies and gentlemen, some Christians get rewards and some do not. Revelation 22, 12 uh, says this, My reward is with me to render to every man according to what he has done. Every man, what he has done is going to be rendered the reward. So the bottom line is this. God cares about how you behave. He cares about what you do in this life. The New Living Translation says this in Revelation 2.10. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. Will we each receive what we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body? Rewards. Rewards. Throughout the Bible, rewards are called crowns. Right? Crowns. The rewards we get, the crowns. We see that throughout Scripture. And there's various crowns that, 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 that those that are in Christ, that, that everything is done, believers upon this earth, based upon what you do, there's various crowns that you will receive in heaven, various rewards that you will receive in heaven. Matter of fact, Tonight, when you come back tonight at 545, we're going to talk about five different crowns that Scripture talks about that, that is handed out in heaven. Not to everybody, but to those that have earned it here upon this earth. So why should it matter? Why should it matter? Well, I, I believe it's like this, ladies and gentlemen. I believe that like why your children upon this earth are always your children... I believe that and just like upon this earth, that, that yes, you may have a son or a daughter or whatever. While your children are still your children, while your family is still your family upon this earth, nothing ever changes that, but you want to be proud of them. You want to be proud of their choices, of their actions, of their lives. What do they do to bless the family name? What do they do to keep the family name? What do they do not to tarnish the family name? What do they do to, to build up the reputation of the family name? I believe exactly like that with God. If you're a Christian, His name is the first part of Christian. Christ. Christian actually means, in the original language, little Christ. So if you are a Christian and you claim to be a Christian and His name is upon you, I believe that He looks upon you and He wants to be proud of you about how you carry around His name. I believe that with all my heart. And sometimes I think that we're frivolously carrying around his name just haphazardly. And we say, well, at least I'm a Christian. I think there's more to it than that. And I think that if we don't have a desire to go deeper than that, that scares me to death. 
and hopefully that scares you as well. So if you're a Christian and you bear the name of Christ in your lives, I pray that you have the desire to want to go deeper, to want to learn more, to want to do more, to want to be able to go forth and make those divine appointments, not just simply be satisfied that you just skid in heaven by the chin of your chin, the hair of the chinny chin chin. Doesn't work that way. I think that God wants to be proud of you, but he's proud of you based upon what you do today what you do tomorrow, what you do before and before you stand in front of him. So whatever that judgment seat of Christ is, whatever if it's if it's if it's if it's the, the moment you die or it's at the rapture, either one, it doesn't matter, you're gonna stand before God and He's going to judge you according to your actions here. It's my prayer that that means something to you. And that means enough to you that you're going to live your life upon this earth acting like you're a representative of Jesus Christ. This morning, let's stand. As Patsy begins to play, I just pray that you just meditate upon what we talked about. And sometimes you may say, thank God, Brother Jimmy's getting long-winded, and he just, that's hogwash. I'm speaking the truth right from God's word. So I pray this morning that what you will do right now is you will simply analyze your life. If you are a Christian, you have God's name based upon you, and how are you doing what your life, what are you living your life to, to be able to, to edify the family name of God? I don't want you to be just content to just slide into heaven, but I want you to be able to do everything you can to make those divine appointments that he talks about in Ephesians. You may be here this morning, and you may just need to pray and ask God for, for those divine appointments, and he'd open up your eyes so you'd see those. Because some of us, I think some of us don't understand what those are all about. And just have that yearning in your heart to say, Lord, can you show me those divine appointments? Because I, I really don't understand on, on what that it means. I really don't understand what you want me to do. If you pray and you earnestly have an open heart, God will talk to you. It may be, ladies and gentlemen, that you've never trusted your life in the hands of Jesus. You've been taking it away. You've been kind of going through your life. Or maybe you need to rededicate and restart fresh with the Lord. Whatever God has placed upon your heart, He didn't put, place it upon your heart just for you to ignore it. Act upon that. Seek Him out right now. Right now as we sing.